Hey there, welcome to our documentary based on land degradation, erosion, and pollution. Sit back, relax, and enjoy as we talk to you about our beautiful destination Belize and how different contributing factors affect it. No land as beautiful as ours, but with such beauty comes along the struggles of land pollution, degradation, and erosion. It is up to all tourism stakeholders to put an end to such horrible activities and restore destination Belize to a pollution-free, marginal degradation and erosion destination once more. So come along and take a ride with us as we look at land pollution, land degradation and land erosion. Also take a look at the suggestions and the policies that we have devised to restore our destination Belize to its former glory. In the past, annual flooding along the Macau River Bank would allow the excavators to continuously extract sand from these areas. However, now that the dam has been built, the Macau River no longer floods, which means that these areas are no longer replenished with sand. The extraction continues and all that remains is huge sinkholes and stagnant water, which are a degradation to the river banks where they occur. There is in fact a policy set in place. That policy is the mineral rights policy which requires a performance bond. This bond ensures compliance with the terms and conditions of the permit or license. These license or permit include mining license, exploration license, prospecting license, and career permits. The Ministry of Natural Resources, specifically the Geology Department, is the body responsible for dealing with these matters. However, it is unclear at the moment if they are in fact enforcing these policies. Arindwat is a very small town and perhaps does not contribute to tourism as much as other districts such as Cayo, Stan Creek, Belize City and even the Keys. However, it is highly known for its rich culture and tours to the Mayan ruins such as Cuello, Lamanay, and Namul. The new river is very essential to the town as it serves as a major transportation for sugar. It also serves as a great view for the tourists since the restaurants and bars lies right in front of the bank of it. On August 29 of 2019, the new river was heavily affected by large quantities of pollutants in the water body, which caused it to change its color completely and developed a putrid smell. Killing the fishes, turtles, crocodiles, and even birds that drank from the water. Not only did it affect the marine and wildlife, but tourists that traveled to and from Lamanai and the residents of the town on a whole. The Belize sugar industry was the main culprit to this dissatisfying environmental tragedy, along with smaller businesses who had been dumping their waste within the water body. This problem rapidly increased as the smell of the river increased, causing the nearby residents, schools, and tourist destinations such as the restaurant and bars to shut down until this tragedy was then fixed. The tourism industry, along with the DOE, 
rapidly called a public meeting in order to come up with questions and answer questions as to what may have caused this horrendous tragedy. At the end of the meeting, no immediate policies nor regulations were set for the companies causing damage to this water body. The policy we created, since there is none currently in place, is to ban the Bayside and other businesses completely from dumping waste into the new river. And if they fail to comply, there will be an issue of a large fine and also the suspension of their business production. Life at La Incomara, RC Primary School in Orange Wat Tong, is slowly returning to normal. The school administration had to adjust its classes as they struggled to deal with the foul smell that emanated from the highly populated New River in recent weeks. Teachers and students began falling ill and swift action from the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health and the Department of the Environment saw classes suspended and ultimately the, the school hours were adjusted. Principal Lenny Umana said the atmosphere at the school is slowly improving. This means that students will soon be seeing other changes in their classrooms, especially since they need to make up on last time. Meanwhile, the Ministries of Education and Health and DOE will be keeping a close watch on the situation. The Pollution Regulations The Department of the Environment, through the Pollution Regulations, has developed mechanisms to monitor and control air, noise, water, and land pollution. These regulations establish the prohibition of releases into the environment of contaminants unless done so with a permit issued by the Department of the Environment and at acceptable levels of contaminants for certain installations. The pollution regulations also establish the prohibition of industries operating and emitting contaminants into the environment without a permit from the DOE powers of the DOE to control pollution, includes the requirement that owners, occupiers and other agents clean up and abate pollution. In order to encourage voluntary compliance, the, de the Department of the Environment is empowered to develop an environmental incentive program as well as a facility environmental audit program. water pollution and it's just mainly garbage on top of garbage on top of garbage in our drains and that caused a problem that we had a couple months earlier where they had silt in the river because these areas aren't owned by anyone per se there aren't any repercussions for these people when they commit these type of I believe that some people do believe that it is a social problem that we have that we keep on polluting and polluting and we complain about it but we don't take the initiative to do anything about it per se.
Any person who fails to comply with the notice will be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $20,000 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding two years or to both.